And I want to consult closely with uh, our Republican colleagues. So they're going to be coming in uh, to the White House next week. And what I want to do is to ask them to put their ideas on the table. And uh, then after the recess, which will be a few weeks away, I want to come back and have a uh, large meeting, Republicans and Democrats, to go through systematically all the best ideas that are out there and move it forward. Before a Super Bowl-sized audience, Barack Obama took to the airwaves to lay out the roadmap forward on health care. And the Republicans seem to be digging in their heels. There might not be a lot of compromise at this February summit, but the president says it will be televised. Top Line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABCNews.com's Top Line. I'm David Chalian. I'm Karen Travers. Each weekday we're bringing you the very latest political headlines, reporting, insight, analysis, everything you need and want to know about politics. Karen, thank you for sitting in for our snowbound uh, recline. <laughs> uh, get us started. What's your snowbound? Snowmageddon did him in. Healthcare summit is where we start today. President Obama is inviting Republican and Democratic <clears throat> leaders to the White House on February 25th for a sit down meeting on healthcare reform. He wants to kickstart this conversation again. This is going to be televised. We heard so much about that last year, and they didn't get that C SPAN promise that he was uh, put out there on the campaign trail. This is interesting. It's almost like back to the drawing board. President Obama says we're going to go through systematically, line by line, the Republican can say, let's scrap it and start all over right. again. Right. Well, it seems to be the bipartisan push that's getting so much attention that he's really going to sort of challenge the Republicans to join him in governing. I actually think one of the smaller missed headlines in this is, is the time frame. I mean, he's talking about now, this is not going to get done until March, maybe April. The healthcare now is going to be on the table for this second year as well. That cannot make a lot of these Democrats who are worried about being on the ballot in November all that mm -hmm. happy. We might hear about August recess again. Last <laughs> year, August recess, now again. So, yes, more chance for slip <laughs> deadlines. <laughs> security offense. Yes, the White House this weekend went on offense with the uh, Homeland Security Advisor to the President, uh, Brennan. He was out on Meet the Press yesterday, Karen, as you know, and he basically said he had enough of, of politics mm -hmm. and national security here. I don't think uh, it's going to end it. He said he briefed four Republican members of Congress on uh, Christmas Day, the day of the bomber with Abdul Muttalib, and there was no objection that he was Mirandized or that he was in custody of the FBI. White House trying to get a fact pattern out there. I think, though, they've already lost the politics on this. Exactly. This is almost a couple weeks too late, and the Republicans are saying, yeah, we did have those conversations with Brennan. That's not how it went down, though. It wasn't brought up. He didn't mention that. Granted, they're saying we didn't ask those questions either, but it was not this extensive conversation that perhaps the White House is trying to pitch this right now. Of course, the White House also points out that not one of these Republicans had any problem with Richard Reid or other, <laughs> during the Bush administration, uh, suspects being Mirandized or in the civilian court system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The politics of national security. Our next top line is Palin brews up zinger. Sarah Palin was the key note speaker at the National Tea Party Convention in Nashville this Saturday, and amid shouts of run, Sarah, run, she gave what was definitely a campaign-like speech down there uh, to the, the activists that were gathered in Nashville. She was really tough on President Obama, wasn't she, David? Which is, of course, nothing new for her, but <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think what is important to look at, what, what happened this weekend with Sarah Palin, less so about the buzz about 2012, and she's considering that. Sure, she can't close the door to that. She wants to give speeches and sell books and get attention, mm -hmm. but... She clearly wants to serve as the conduit between this Tea Party activism and the Republican Party. That is a potentially very powerful place to be. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is a powerful piece of real estate to own because she wants to deliver this activism mm -hmm. for the party's electoral gains. If she can do that, she is going to be a, a much coveted person. If she can mobilize that swell of support from the Tea Party activists and merge that into some sort of electoral agenda over the next couple years that you're right that's very powerful we'll get into that again uh, a little bit later with margaret carlson and drop out yes unbelievable <laughs> illinois politics it just it never disappoints folks the guy who won the nomination on the democratic side for lieutenant governor won the this nomination last week the next day it's revealed that he had held his ex-girlfriend who was a prostitute at knife point it was just t terribly mm -hmm. damaging and, and Finally, last night, at <laughs> halftime, no less, at a sports bar during the Super Bowl, he decides he's not going to run and drag down the whole ticket in Illinois with him. And it, so now the Democratic Party poobahs in Illinois are going to have to find a replacement. I remember in 2004, we went through all of this with some of the primaries for that Senate race, too. You were hearing all these scandalous stories. And you're right. Illinois does not disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to begin with the economy. We are joined uh, by a special guest today. He is the chairman and president of the Export-Import Bank of the United States, Fred Hochberg. Thank you very much for being here, sir. Uh, I want to play for you uh, a bit of the State of the Union, President Obama talking about trade and how that's now going to sort of uh, inject itself into his overall economic agenda. Take a listen, we'll talk about it. 
tonight, we set a new goal. We will double our exports over the next five years, an increase that will support two million jobs in America. To help meet this goal, we're launching a national export initiative that will help farmers and small businesses increase their exports and reform export controls consistent with national security. Fred, explain this to me. It, usually, when you hear export and you hear trade, there is, it, it, there is fear out in the country that that somehow means job losses. He's talking about this trade initiative now being two million jobs added to our payrolls. How does that work? And what is your mission with that? If there's one thing Republicans and Democrats can agree on, it's exports. We may have debates about trade, but there's not a lot of debate about exports. Uh, President Obama is talking about doubling exports in the next five years. Uh, we have seen, we are the largest manufacturing country in the entire world. No country makes more manufactured goods in the United States. So we're in a very good position to double our exports. Countries around the world are growing, their economies are growing, the economies of Asia are much stronger. They did not take on the debt of Western countries. They're building infrastructure, their economies are growing, and we have an opportunity to sell in Latin America and Asia and many other places of the world to double our exports. Well, well, Fred, the president did not sign on in the State of the Union. He didn't signal any increased support for the free trade agreements that are pending with Colombia, with South Korea, with Panama. How do you do that? How do you double the exports? How do you have that lead to job creation without these free trade agreements? The free trade agreements are important, and he certainly signaled his support for that. But the, we can double exports they are not the barrier or the impediment to doubling exports. I mean, we have seen at the Export-Import Bank of the United States, our year ends September 30th, as the federal government does. We're up 50 percent. In the first three months of this fiscal year, October, November, December, we did triple the loans we did a year ago. So we are seeing increased activity. We are seeing increased activity. And if you look at the economic picture for 2009, the one area that really led more than anything else was exports. Well, so then when you heard the president say that in the State of the Union, did, uh, did you say to yourself, oh, my, my 2010 is going to be much different than my 2009, that th this is now uh, a new calling, or no, this was in line of what, where you guys were? And well, first of all, when I heard the president announce he wants to double exports in five years, I thought this is a great State of the Union address. <laughs> I could not have found a better <laughs> message in that address. Uh, we are on the upswing. Uh, we are working with our colleagues at the Commerce Department, uh, Ambassador Kirk at U.S. The United States Trade Representative, and elsewhere to increase and double our exports. As I mentioned, we're up 50 percent. We tripled our amount of, of export support in the first three months of this fiscal year. We are seeing more and more activity. We are see I was just in Colombia where we're talking about a free trade agreement. There is great interest in doing work with the United States. Uh, we signed a $1 billion preliminary commitment to support the oil and gas industry of, of Colombia. They are building and building infrastructure at a rapid rate, and we're there to help them. We're there to help with financing. How does that equal jobs here when you support their, their well, oil and gas industry? What we do is uh, we make loans so that helps Echo Patrol, the petroleum company of Colombia, buy American goods and services. So it means buying oil platforms, engineering services, drill bits. All uh, made here. All made here. We only support manufactured goods that are made in America. So when we made last year $21 billion worth of loans, that equated to about $26 billion worth of exports of American goods, goods that are manufactured in America, made by Americans in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, Fred, before I let you go, can I ask you to take your uh, export-import hat off for just one moment? You are one of the highest-ranking gay officials in the Obama administration. Uh, the other item in the State of the Union speech that he talked about was don't ask, don't tell. You, ha you had uh, seen throughout last year members in the gay community a, a little uh, disgruntled, if you will, with the Obama administration, not feeling he was moving fast enough on some of their priorities. Do you think that went a long way to assuaging that concern in the gay community? I think it was a very brave step. I think President Obama indicated his support for that for many, many years, uh, put it into the State of the Union, was a very high-profile place of signaling that. But more important, or equally important, was Admiral Mullen and Secretary Gates testifying just last week. And Admiral Mullen said it so well. I think he understands that this is a cultural change inside the military. And his strong testimony signals that he is four square behind this thing and it is moving. And it is moving as rapidly as it can. And so do you think inside the gay community, the, sorry, the, uh, this concern has been assuaged about the Obama agenda? Well, you know, I, I think that being a president and being a leader is, you're going to, 
satisfy people and disappoint people. So is it assuaged 100%? I doubt it. No, it's never assuaged 100%. But it's moving in the right direction. President Obama signed hate crimes this last year. We're moving forward on Don't Ask, Don't Tell. These are all important steps forward. Fred Hochberg, Chairman and President of the Export-Import Bank, thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it.